Hi, and thank you so much for checking out my video. We're back in the studio again today for another quick video on why with all these amazing watches out there that you can just go pick up anywhere at any time, why did I choose to wait months and do all this extra work just to obtain a Rolex Explorer 2? And the answer is simple. It's the best of the best. It does everything well. And now I'm no watch expert by any means. I'm a nature photographer that travels all over the world beating the hell out of my equipment because we're putting it in extreme environments. And I need a watch I can rely on 100%. It's also that it can be utilized in any situation. Those crazy locations I go to or even just those high-end events gallery exhibits, gallery openings. The Rolex Explorer 2 is at home in any situation. The Rolex Explorer line has a great history and great prestige. First watch to conquer Everest, and that history of toughness and durability has been passed down to the watches we now know today, the Explorer and Explorer 2. Watches are extremely important to me and vital for me capturing my nature photography in the way that I use a technical camera that is nothing automatic about it. So I rely on my watches to be able to set my exposure times. Now, over the years, I've gone through a ton of watches, breaking them and also just kind of weeding them out because some just can't quite keep up with the extreme environments I put them through, the extreme conditions I ask them to deal with. They just can't do it. And just a couple examples of that is I do have the Garmin watch, which Great watch for what it is. It's just the one problem with it, you have to charge it. Another cord for me to bring, as well as the battery power. When you're in frigid temperatures, the battery power plummets to nothing. Yes, it does do a million more things than the Rolex does, but what's really important for me is just that second hand, that timer, as well as obviously knowing the time. That's my most important thing. So also it's not really acceptable to wear at high end events. Now these other watches, they're automatic watches, so they wind themselves just by using your daily motion on your wrist, so they don't need to be plugged in and they don't have any batteries you have to worry about dying. The second watch, which is still in the rotation, I really enjoy this watch, it's the Omega Planet Ocean 43 millimeter. This is a great watch. I still use this one for when I'm doing a lot of water work and I'll be diving and things like that. But just as it's tough in it, it's very, very tough and great for that. The only place, and it doesn't really, it depends on your personal opinion on this, the only place it really falls short is at the gallery and high-end events. I can't really wear this under a cuff, under a jacket, under a dress shirt. Still love this watch, great watch, obviously gonna keep it, but that is where the Explorer 2 trumps the Omega. The third one is my Breitling Chronograph. I really do enjoy this watch. It works well in events, as well as when I am doing photography, it's so helpful to have a chronograph, a timer on the actual watch. And that's where this watch does supersede, is a little bit better than the Rolex. I can keep track of time a little bit better. But the one downfall of this Breitling and it, why it's not my daily watch anymore is it's not as durable as well, both the Omega and the Rolex Explorer too. I've been having a little problem with this in the way that I used to travel with it a lot. It used to be my daily watch. And when I first got it, it was plus two seconds a day, keeping track of it. But now after going through either metal detectors, this thing has been beat up for about a year now falling. It's now 15 seconds fast. So it hasn't been able to keep up with the durability aspect that I need of this watch. I am gonna get this repaired and keep it in my collection because it's a great watch. I think it's still one of the best looking watches out there. So it will stay in the collection, but it's just not quite durable enough in these extreme locations. And it should be said too, out of the automatic winding watches, the Rolex is the most accurate. It's rated to plus minus two seconds a day. And these other two watches are certified and accurate up to minus four plus six seconds a day. Now all these watches are great, but still didn't fully answer the question is why I waited months and months and had to do extra work to get the Explorer 2. And 
that is one of those things where it's kind of hard to explain. I'm not sure if it's subliminal messaging by how Rolex does their advertising or how they run their business. I'm not a Rolex fanboy. I just want a tool watch, a piece of equipment that works very, very, very well in harsh conditions like I've talked about earlier. But this Rolex watch, this Explorer 2, looking at it, I never really thought it was the prettiest watch. It was just a tough, durable tool watch that I felt I needed in my arsenal to help my photography. And in a way, it's kind of this weird, every time I look at it, it's almost, for lack of a better word, it's almost inspiring. And again, I'm not sure if that's their advertising, that's their, you know, first watch to conquer um, Everest. I'm not sure if it's how they, I'm not sure if it's the beauty of it. I'm not sure if it's the history. I, I don't know, but it's this interesting, interesting thing that even just a couple days ago, I was kind of finishing up my day and thought, oh, this movie's on, let's watch it. But then I looked at my watch to see what time it was. And I'm like, you know, I've seen this movie twice now. I can be spending my time in better ways here. It, it, it kind of inspired me. I'm not sure if it's the name of the Explorer name, but it expired, inspired me to go out and say, hey, you know, some other stuff can be done now. Let's go for a hike. Let's go do something. Hey, you know what? It might be a decent sunset. And that's what's so special about this watch that I can't quite put my finger on just yet that none of these other watches, again, I enjoy these watches. They're great. They haven't quite hit me or they haven't quite inspired me like the Rolex has. It's just, it probably is all subliminal messaging from Rolex, but it really is one of those things. It's just so inspired looking at that. Every time I look at it, I get this kind of weird little butterfly in my stomach, this feeling that, oh, let's go do something. Let's go explore. Let's push myself to the next thing. And even on those horrible days, nothing's going right. Looking at this watch, I get kind of a goofy little kid smile. I, I don't know what it is. I mean, this watch has kind of that hard, rigid edge, tough, take it anywhere. This is an explorer, dive into caves. This was made for cave diving, for, for cave exploration. But also too, you look at it and in a way, it's got kind of those silly, I mean, this big, beautiful white dial that's got white gold painted black. Why would you do that? looks great, it's very legible, but it's also a little silly. The brushed metal bezel, this thing is gonna get scratched, it's gonna get dented, you know? Why didn't they switch to ceramic? I'm so happy they didn't switch to ceramic. I am looking forward to beating this watch up and each one of those scratches and dents that this bezel gathers, it's gonna be a memory. It's gonna be an experience. Look back at that watch. Yeah, it might be a little hard at first, but looking at those dents later on, it's gonna bring back that memory. Oh God, remember when I did this? When we were hiking up Angel's Landing, or when we were doing this, when we were in Alaska, oh, remember this, hit this and that. I am so looking forward to creating memories with this watch. Also, the Explorer 2 is a GMT watch, which is very helpful in a daily watch with how much we travel. Just that pop of orange, just gorgeous. And the Explorer 2 written in orange, Everything's so clean, the Cyclops. I think this is the only Rolex watch where the Cyclops actually looks good. All these watches put a smile on my face, but not quite like the Rolex Explorer does. Yes, this one's still new, it's brand new to my collection. I've had these others, maybe the love will wear a little bit, I don't know. I mean, subscribe to this channel, we're gonna be doing a lot of fun stuff with this watch, a lot of new videos on it as I travel doing my photography. We'll see, maybe the love will wane a little bit. I don't know, but right now, it still might be kind of the honeymoon with this watch, but it's just, I mean, the smile I get for looking at this thing, and it could be that I had to work harder for it. These other watches, I just walked into the store and was able to get them. Subliminally give me the idea that I like it better. I don't know. All I know is it puts a huge smile on my face. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers.